Beautiful job. You have a beautiful voice. You can sit in back here. Well, it's a great day. Great day in the Lord. If you're glad to be here, turn to your neighbor and say, Amen. If you're not that excited to be here, say, Oh my. Well, there's a couple people here. That's all right. But we're glad to be here, and I'm blessed to bring the Word of God. Somebody says, what do you like about the Bible? I said, one, one thing is God's love letter to us. If you need encouragement, read the Bible. If you need instruction, you read the Bible. If you need to know how to be saved and have eternal life, you read the Bible. The Bible is the inspired Word of God, period. And somebody said it was written by man. Sure it was. But it was written by men inspired by the Holy Spirit. So we know that every word we read is given by God. And He has written these words through men that had a lot of flaws. Say flaws. Say shortcomings. They, were, they needed grace. They needed to be saved. But God chose to use these prophets and apostles to preach the Word. And even guys like me, just to humbly bring some thoughts that I've had for the last week. And somebody said to me, Ross, how do you know what sermon to bring? How do you know what sermon to preach? How do you know what title to bring? And I said to myself, that's a great question. And many times what I think that the, God, that the Lord gives me from reading the Scripture is things that happened in my life. So, if you're listening, say amen. Amen. So the things that happen in my life, along the dusty trails of this sin fallen world, things happen in my life, and all of a sudden, things that happen in my life bring up things that I want to bring to you. And I'm yelling because that's a lot of noise. Some, some people are, I'm just trying to get my word out, so I don't want y'all to miss it. So part, pardon me for yelling a little bit louder than I use, usually do. But you can go to my sermons on sermonaudio.com, ready to go. Some of my sermons are heard all over and, and, and all over the world. I mean, little old me. I'm in Atlanta. But if you want a sermon on your smartphone, go to sermonaudio.com forward slash ready to go ministries. And somebody said, what are you preaching on today? And I said, my favorite subject. I said, my favorite subject. And somebody looked at me and said, well, what is your favorite subject? This is not a trick question, but it's a good question. I said, my favorite subject to preach about in the Bible is Jesus. So turn to your neighbor and say, Jesus Christ. I mean, we should be excited about it, especially when you're one more day closer to seeing Him. If you're growing older like me, somebody said you let your hair grow out. And I said, yeah, I am. I'm just come to grips with being 60. And they said, well, you look pretty good for 60. And I said, well, how do you feel? She, she said, pretty good. And she said, well, how do you feel? And I said, I'm both pretty and good. And she laughed at that because that's a joke, y'all. So I, I'm just having fun with me getting older. But when I get older, I'm getting more closer to seeing my Savior. Hopefully that's you too. But here's a question I want to ask. Just one question I want to ask you about the Bible. I, you don't want my opinions. I don't look at opinion pages. I don't care what people's opinions are. The, the newspapers are full of op-eds that I care nothing about your opinion. Now, am I you know, careful to just acknowledge your opinions and be nice? Yes, of course. But when it comes down to it, if your opinion contradicts what God's Word says, guess what I do? It's God's Word. That's just the way it is. Because God's Word is infinitely perfect and divine, even though it's written by imperfect men, because it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit. God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Spirit. So I've seen some people on TV lately. They're preaching this Christ, Jesus. And I'm going, that's not what the Bible says about Jesus. Why are you preaching something that's not quite true about Jesus? I call it preaching the fictitious G 
Jesus. Well, Jesus loves you. We know that. That's for sure. But He wants you to have a wonderful plan and never have any problems in your life. That's why He came to die. <clears throat> Wrong! You know what? I've had more problems as a Christian in faith than I had ever when I was not a Christian. And by the way, I haven't been a Christian all my life. You're not born one. You're born with a sinful nature and if you have never come to know Jesus as your Savior, tomorrow is the day? No. Today is the day. Why is today the day? Put your hand over your heart. Is it beat? I'm still glad I'm alive. If you're not a Christian, you're, you're still having an opportunity, praise the Lord. But Jesus died to save me from my sins, so I decided to preach about one sentence. I did. And it may be seem simplistic to you, but I've heard people preach different kinds of Jesuses, and I'm saying, that doesn't sound right. Let me see if the Bible says that's what that person is preaching about Jesus. Who is Jesus Christ? Other than most hardened <coughs> skeptics, <coughs> everyone agrees that Jesus Christ actually existed and walked the earth for some 2,000 years ago. You know what? Atheists believe in Jesus. All kinds of different religions and cults believe there was a Jesus. He was a, a, a figure that existed. They believe that there was a Jesus Christ. Now you can know about Jesus without knowing Jesus. Oh, uh, there's the evangelism part of me. See, you can know that, yeah, he was a man. He was a good man. He, he was a prophet. Etc. But Jesus does not give us any of these options. You've got to believe about Jesus, what Jesus said about Himself, or you're going to believe that He is a liar. Because He claimed a very special claim about Himself. And many believe He was a prophet. Yeah, okay. I got that part. He was a good man, of course. Most of us listening to the message here are good, but you can't get to heaven by being a good person. If you can get to heaven by being a good person, then why did Jesus die on the cross as the sinless Son of God? Why did He resurrect from the dead? Why do you have to put your faith in Him through repentance of sin if you on your own can get to heaven by being a good person? I asked somebody that the other day when I was witnessing to him. I said, uh, are you going to heaven when you die? Yes. Yes, absolutely. I said, well, why are you going to heaven? Because I'm a good person. Here we go with the good person stuff. The Bible's real clear. It's for by grace you have been saved through faith alone, in Christ alone, not by good works and being a good person, lest anybody boast. Look at me, how good I am. If you can get to heaven by being a good person, Jesus died on the cross in vain. And God is not going to be pleased with you when you stand before Him and say, you got to let me in, God, because I was a good person. After Jesus died on the cross as the sinless Lamb of God and took your place and my place on the cross, you're going to think that you can get to God by being a good person? That's going to make God mad. It's called God's perfect wrath. And guess what? Like most parents... Parents are not pleased when they have to punish their children. And God is not happy when He has to punish a non-believer after what He has done for us on the cross of Calvary. Would you feel His heart that people are trying to bypass what He did for them and satisfy the, the, the sin debt? And then I'm getting it. I say, Lord, I'm 70% good. The guy said, I'm 70% good. I love this kind of conversation when you witness the people. I said, 70% good? That's pretty good. I said, why are you 70% good? Well, I, I work hard. I take care of my family. I give to the poor. I go to church, you know, whenever I can. I got a Bible over there. You know, everything's real good. I'm a pretty good person. Well, most people are pretty good. But how good do you have to be? My question was, okay, are you going to... Where are you going to go when you die? He said, heaven. I said, why? Because I'm a good person. I said, well, how good do you have to be? 71%? See, so he started thinking about it. 
What percentage, man? And how would you know if you're good enough? He says, well, you got a good point. So I like to make people think. I can preach like I'm doing today, but I can also talk to people just one-to-one at Kroger store. Hey, hey. I got these gospel tracks I made because I like to keep it a little bit light. And I made them. We got my picture on them. You know, dead presidents on dollar bills, but I put myself on them. I'm not dead. Thank you. Thank you. But I thought it's fun. I thought it's fun. People go, oh, that's fun. That's cute. It's got me doing my thumbs up. I always do thumbs up. And I made it a 316 bill. $316. <laughs> and she said, uh, or he said, whatever. He said, 316? What's up with that? I said, do you know the famous passage in 316 in the Bible? And she said, mm, she, stum she was stumbling a little bit. And I said, do you have a Christian background? She said, yeah, I grew up in church. I said, well, so what's the famous 316 verse? I would guide her a little bit, see. I made her think. I want her to go to heaven. I don't want to bang her over the head with the Bible. That's not what I do. God wants all people to repent and come to a knowledge of the truth. But she goes, you know what she said to me? Yes, yeah, she looked at 316. She goes, my grandmother didn't like it. She would, if I didn't know this, she's, I said, you were, you were raised in church by your grandmother? Yeah. I said, she goes, my grandma would know what that verse meant. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes upon Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeah, give me some of that. And she smiled. She said, can I have a couple more for my friend? And I, of course, have a lot of 3.16s. Well, they got a sermon on the back. Tell you how to be saved. Maybe she's never heard the complete gospel before. She goes, these are me. See, it's a serious message, but getting a sermon, oh, there are many sermons. I made them so I can give them out and have fun with them because I can't talk to everybody for 30 minutes or preach for 45 minutes. And she goes, thank you. I'll read it in the back. Give it to my, I'll definitely give one to my grandma. She don't love that. I said, well, maybe she can tell you a few things about God and about how to be saved. She said, cool, I'm fair enough. But everybody knows about Jesus, the prophet, a teacher. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, there's some people like C.S. Lewis pointed out in a book. I love this book. It's called Mere Christianity. Simple Christianity. What is it? Simple Christianity. What is it? People get it all confused. Preachers are preaching the wrong Christianity. They're preaching some type of fictitious Jesus. Jesus had it worse than everyone when He lived on this earth. He understood what it is to be like us. He experienced every area of human emotion that you've ever been through. And somebody told me the other day, God doesn't know how I feel. I said, can I tell you that He does? Can I tell you that God does know how you feel? He says, well, how so? I said, I'm going to tell you in a minute. And it's going to make you understand that God is not disconnected with you because He created you before you were in your mother's womb. He knew you before you were in your mother's womb. That's pretty, that's pretty heavy. And He likes you just the way you are, but He doesn't want you to be just like you. He wants you to be like His Son, but we've got a lot of work to do. I've got a lot of work to do with this. And a lot of people still say today, I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher. Not about morals. I don't care if you stole one time in your life. You're a thief. That's called sin. Christ came to save you from the consequences, the penalty, and the power of sin. That's it. That's the promise that God gave us in the Bible. Now, are there benefits for being a Christian? Oh, absolutely. The benefits are you can go and pray to God anytime you want through the blood of Jesus Christ. God inclines His ear to you and He wants to hear your heart about your needs and about your wants and about what you want from Him. And Lord, help me. Have mercy on me. I can't get out of bed this morning. I feel like this. Will you help me, Lord? That's the benefits. Now, are the benefits that Jesus died and suffered a cruel, rugged death on a, on a cruel, criminal cross that I will have a nice life all the time? Bigger car, like I hear on TV, bigger car, bigger mansions. 
Fancy clothes, well maybe not that. Fancy clothes. No, he, he died for a much more significant purpose. Sin. The Bible even says that God made him to be sin for us. And he knew no sin. Now, this, this is a mind blow for me. God made his own sinless son to be sin for us. And he knew no sin. And word, thought, and deed. Now, go, go a day without word, thought, or deed sinning. Try it. People go, I, I, I believe you can get to sinless perfection while you're here on earth. That's blasphemy. Because if you're saying you can get perfect before you die, you're saying that God didn't need to send his son to die on the cross. No, we're all stumble and fumble and sin. We need grace every day of our life. We need to pray to God, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me what I said. Forgive me what I thought. Forgive me what I did. He doesn't want us to be defeated Christians. He wants us to be liberated and refreshed and restored even when we're going through our problems in life. That's the time when you're going to know Him the best. The time that I really, 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 really got to know my Savior is the times I was at the lowest part of my life. Dark dungeon. Say dark dungeon. Have you ever been in a dark place in your life? It's not all wine and roses. It's not all you're walking through a bed of tulips to get a Christian. I promise you that. Just read what Jesus went through when He was on the earth. And so, the logic of the standpoint by pointing of what Jesus said about Himself. If we don't believe what Jesus said, He's two things, y'all. This is it. If you don't believe what Jesus said about Himself, there's two options. There's not a bunch of options. You can't just believe He's a good teacher. Which he was. You can't believe he was a moral person, which of course he was. You can't believe he did this and this. He did all the good things, yeah. But just knowing about them is not going to get you to heaven. What did Jesus say about himself? I think it's a great question. Either you believe that he is the Messiah, Christ, God come to earth as man. 100% God, 100% man. He never stopped being God to become man. If you do not believe that, you are calling Him the worst lunatic that ever lived. How could anybody say that about themselves and not being correct? Lunatic! Either you believe He's a lunatic or a liar. He lied. That's, that's the option. And some people go, oh yeah, he was a good teacher, good prophet, good person. Da, da, da. That, that, that's not the option he gives you. That's not what he claimed about himself. Now, you can believe him or you don't. I know people all the time, they, they could be atheists, like I said, and say, yeah, I believe in Jesus. But that's not what I believe about Jesus. Okay. Well, see, so what he said about himself is not true. He's a liar. Well, no, I wouldn't call him exactly a liar. Say everybody wants to get around that stuff. You think I've got to call a spade a spade, man? He goes, again, I like to make people say, that's a good point. It's a good point. Make them think. You know, you don't, like I said, you don't want to hit on I never take a big Bible and hit people over the head with it. I like to talk to people. What's, what do you believe happens to a person when they die? You wouldn't believe the answers I gave. Where they go to an in-between place or they go over here and pray me. I say things to people that have been in, in church all their life, and they go, really? That, I've never heard that before. I'm like, what are preachers preaching? I mean, simple gospels, the simple gospel, what who Jesus is. I mean, people, some Christians really can't tell you who Jesus is. That's a red flag for me. Hmm? So you either believe he's a lunatic or a liar, because this is what he said about himself. If either one of these are true, we have even rejected the prophet teacher and the good man as an option. Now there's no options. Either you believe Him or not. You believe that He came to die for your sins because He was without sin, or you believe it's not true. So either Jesus Christ is God in human form, and he, as He claims, that I am the way, the truth, the life. If you've seen Me, you've seen the Father. He claimed to be God in the most religious 
places on the face of the earth. Back 2,000 years ago in the temple, he stood up. And he claimed all these people. We're talking about religious people that knew the scriptures. He says, I am the way, the truth, the life. He didn't say, I will teach a way, a truth, and a life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And they're going, no, you're not. You're a blasphemer. That's the reason they killed Jesus. That's the reason that he was crucified. Because they believe that no man can come down and, and, and claim to be God come to, to earth in human flesh. Nobody could say that. You're a blasphemer. That's why they killed him. Because he was a black. They called him. They, that, that's it. They saw his works. They saw him raising the dead, casting out demons. He was performing all these miracles right before their eyes. And they denied him as God, the Messiah, prophesied in the Old Testament. You know what they were? They were very religious. They did all the religious things, but they had no knowledge because they didn't read what the Scripture said about Jesus in the Old Testament. If they had read about Jesus from Isaiah 700 years before the birth of Christ, they would have said, yes. You are the Messiah. You have come. They were looking for a Messiah, a political Messiah, that would get them out of the oppression of Rome and the tyranny of Rome. They wanted someone to feed them. See, as when, when, long as Jesus fed them physically, they, he was being followed by people. And they wanted to make him king by force, the Bible said. And he said he'd have nothing to do with that. He didn't come for that reason the first time. He will the second time. He will be king of kings and lord of lords the next time. But what was the most more important reason that Jesus came? To save us from our sins. So we could have everlasting life in a place called heaven, paradise. Where there's no crime. There's no more sin. There's no more temptation. I'm so tired of being tempted. If you're not, somebody says, oh, I don't get tempted. I'm a Christian, but I don't get tempted. I said, well, you, you sound like you're not a Christian. T Jesus was tempted in all points. Jesus Christ, Son of God, Son of Man, Son of David, the Messiah prophesied in the Old Testament. He came and said, I am God. I am the Messiah. Believe upon me. And they didn't believe him. They rejected the message. So they thought he was crazy and a liar. Okay, bad. Some people say that today. People in his day who refused to believe tried to shut him up. Why would they, why would they want to shut Jesus up? They don't want to hear the truth. You tell people the truth about their condition, they don't want to hear it. Now, think about this with your doctor. I want a doctor. Doctor, you call your doctor when what? You're sick. Huh? Anybody call their doctor just to say hello? My doctor would say, what's up with you? You're crazy, Rob. What do you want? Are you sick? What do you need? I don't call my doctor up and talk, do small talk with him. I call him because I'm sick. He wouldn't even talk. I know my doctor. He wouldn't. He, he, got, plenty, he got too much to do. What? You talking about the weather? I'm a doctor. I got to go. But if I'm sick, where do I go? I go to my doctor. And I go in the doctor, and if he had something, if he had a syringe ready to give me a shot right away without even examining me, I would say, uh-uh, you ain't, you ain't even looked at me. Doctor, you haven't even examined me. You haven't even took an x-ray of me. How many of you have taken x-rays before? We know what that is. But it exposes what's inside you. It will expose a tumor. And then it will expose if you want to get your blood taken and that blood, the blood tells you what you have and what you need in order to make you well again. And then all of a sudden the shot that you wouldn't take from your doctor, it all of a sudden what? It makes sense. Doctor, please give me the shot. I like to make Jesus make sense to people. Jesus loves you, wants to have, wants you to have everything. All everything. A problem-free life. No, he doesn't. He wants you to have a fruitful life. What are the fruits of the Spirit that we should be praying for as Christians? 
has nothing to do with more stuff. Love. Say it. Love. Joy. Peace. Patience. Kindness. Goodness. Gentleness. Faithfulness. And self-control. How many of us want more of that? Some people say, I got enough of that. No, you don't. You ain't loving your neighbor as you should. Nobody can except for Jesus. You can't love God with all your might, heart, soul, and mind. Only Jesus did that. Somebody told me the other day, I love God with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength. I said, you just broke the ninth commandment by lying. You know, lying is a sin. That's why Jesus came to save you from your sins. You just told a lie. There's only one person that ever lived in the flesh that kept that first commandment, loving God with all of his heart, all of his soul, all of his mind, and all of his strength. Every nanosecond of the day is Jesus the Christ. Say Jesus. Jesus. The Christ. Christ. Jesus was his first name. In Hebrew, it's Yahshua. Christ was his designation. The Messiah. Christ in Greek is Messiah. Messiah is Hebrew for the anointed one. Christ is Greek for the anointed one. Jesus the Christ. Jesus the anointed one. The one that was sent. I know a lot of converted Jews. They were born Jews. They're still Jews. But they, can, they, they said that Jesus is the Messiah. I, I accept it, that Jesus is the written about Messiah in the Old Testament. I know a lot of converted Jewish people. Sure do. But you're still Jewish. You don't change being Jewish because you become a Christian. I can't, I'm Greek. I always will be. Can't take the Greek out of the Greek, man. I'm three quarters Greek. Try to trick, take, take the Greek out of me. So it doesn't matter what religion, where your background is from. You can know the Lord Jesus as your Savior. You have to. If you don't, then if you die in your own sins, you'll pay for your own sins. God's already paid for your sins through Jesus Christ. They spit at Him. This, this is hard to be to preach this. They, they spit at Jesus. They slapped Jesus' face. And they said He was crazy. Can you imagine? Sinners that...